Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. If you'll uh, direct your attention to right here. I have some paint. And, and I have this. I don't quite know what this is for. Today, we are going to be painting. We're going to be painting OTT, the uh, universal plugin. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. But uh, if you're not, maybe you'll get to know today. I'm back here, I have my canvas. Hold on, if you'll excuse me for just one moment. Through my many years of experience of painting, I actually don't really know how to how to paint. Our color area is um, going to be dealing with a lot of grays, some darker grays, I should say. A little bit of green, um, some brownish. I mean, the whole midsection here is kind of just like a like a different shades of poo. I also have these. I don't know what they are. Here I have my. Uh, palette, which I will be squirting. But paint on too. <laughs> very nice. Brush selection is actually a very important part here. And as you can see, I have quite a selection of brushes. Now that we have our brush primed and our paint sort of just squirted on our plate, we're ready to start. Now, the first thing I'm going to be doing today is painting our border. One of the most important things about a border is you want it to be thick. You really want it to be thick. You don't want it to be too thin. However, there is also such a thing as being too thick, not necessarily in my world, but in the world of painting. So the most important thing, we define that sweet spot in the middle between too thin and too thick. And that's what we're doing right now. You might notice my borders are a little disproportionate. Art is a conversation. And sometimes, sometimes that conversation has uh, stronger arguments on one side. That's a nice OTT color coming out of this concoction here. Grab one more brush, number five brush. <laughs> Excuse me. and just mix around. Still a little bit of wet paint on here, so just be careful. Try not to drag any of that black paint in there. <laughs> dark, less dark, and light. I think what we're actually gonna do here is we're gonna fill in the inside and wait for it to dry. Really just kind of push the brush in and make sure you spread that paint out nice and even. You might get paint on your hand, in which case, uh, just wipe it on your, just wipe it on your jeans that you, that you don't ever wear anymore. I mean, when's the last time you actually wore jeans? Where'd you wear them to? Your kitchen. Now, if your painting starts to look like something out of perhaps uh, kindergarten art class, it's all part of the process. The, the paint has to dry before we can continue our process. Oh Jesus, oh, oh God, okay. Um, using oil paints. Maybe uh, it would it would take only uh, you know ten to twenty minutes. It's looking like a, a couple of days. <laughs> Good morning. Still not dry. I'm going to hang our original creation up. It has served its purpose. As we wipe the slate clean today, a new fighter joins the battle. Acrylic paints. So. When you flip the top, you'll notice I already got some paint on me. It's all part of the process. Put in just a touch of black. You can really see the, the gray start to come out. Not too light, not too dark. I call it the Goldilocks gray. And now we can go forth 
with painting our border. It's okay if your border is a little squaggly, if you will. I like to use fun words like that. Follow me. I like to sort of dip over the sides of the canvas. Exquisite. I like to look at this as the front page of the book. You have an outline, the beginning of the story, the beginning of the conversation. This is the outline border, whereas this is the inner border. Notice the contrast. Now, if you paint, water starts to turn all cloudy and gray. Don't worry. We'll bring some sunshine right back into its life. Dap your brush up real nice. Get it nice and thick and wet. And let's fill in. Isn't that just something special? I think everyone's earned a nice little straw coffee break. And you're gonna want your biggest brush that you have, which is the number 15. And what we're gonna do is cover our entire already white area so that it's just a touch less white. Really what we're going for here, as you can see, the outer perimeter of the entire thing is solid core white, whereas what we have around in this area right here this is what we've just applied. Moving on, what we're going to do is we can begin our typography. This is a very crucial step in the entire process. So if you if you mess it up, it's not a big deal, but you're going to have to start all the way over. So it's really important that you don't screw up. We'll start with the furthermost right T and then go to the left T and finish off with the O. We want a really small brush for this section. We have an X, an F, an E, and an R. And those four little letters, we'll just keep them between us. So we're gonna start off with our happy little X. It's really important to notice the curve at the top of the F. If you start to panic, because it looks like you might not have enough room because you made your O and your TT too big, uh, don't panic. You you could you can panic a little bit but like try not just try not to panic too much and uh with whatever little space you have left we'll just uh we'll just cram an r in there now for this part you're going to want to try and make your circles as even as you can i know drawing a perfect circle really hard painting a perfect circle even harder and if your circles don't come out perfect it's okay you're just not you're just not a good painter but that's fine painting isn't about paint or, or painting. It's about the... Our circles are gonna start on the left-hand side. Now that's a good circle. <laughs> that's... I might have made them a little bit too big. Who doesn't like big circles? <laughs> now, as everyone knows, the optimal position is at 100%. That's absolutely beautiful. Four rectangles, all perfectly symmetrical, beautifully shaped. Four in a row. Let's go ahead and get our brown and green taken care of. I like to call this the poopy poo poo diarrhea zone. And the reason I call it that is because of the uh, specific shades of brown and green that we're going to be using. We're going to be going with holly branch green because it's a bit darker. And as you can see, the nutmeg is a slightly lighter shade of brown. I think what we'll do is we'll take a bit of the melted chocolate, we'll mix it with the, uh, we'll mix it with the holly branch green, and that'll give us a nice, it's gonna probably look like, like poop. Colors are, are similar in that of a, a baked beans, because you open a can of baked beans, and we're, while we are not eating the colors, 
we are enjoying them in a very similar fashion. The amount of enjoyment is that of a can of baked beans. If you take a darker gray and layer the underside of the knobs, it creates some depth. Okay, everyone, I think now's the time we take a look at what we created. Thank you for coming along on this journey. And uh, as we all know, art is a conversation. And I really believe that today uh, we concluded that conversation on a high note. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.